Hi, I'm Toby Hodges. This is my very chilled out new furry friend, Leo. And we are on board his Fontaine Pajot Aura 51. The second of these yachts to launch. And we're off La Rochelle, trying to find a little bit of breeze to set the sails. So a good chance to walk you through this big, spacious cruising catamaran. So Leo has prime spot there in this huge cockpit. And this Aura 51 belongs to Johan and Christine Salen. So if you recognize the name, he's the co-owner of what was the Volvo Ocean Race, the Ocean Race. And this is now their home for the next few years, where he lives and works from. And they're experienced catamaran cruising sailors, they've spent three years sailing around the world on a Nutrim F5X about 10 years ago and now they'll spend the next three to four years cruising Europe on this with Leo and then off to the Pacific again after that. As you can see this is a big spacious platform in which to do so. Yeah this the new Aura 51 which is now offered as a smart electric version as well. We are on the, yeah, the twin Volvo Penta diesel version. And those that know the new Fontaine Pajos know it's also available with their hydraulic bathing platform system, which lowers, lowers down there to, to, to launch your dinghy. It's quite a, a large swim platform. It's a heavier option. These are being replaced uh, for lighter white ones as well but those davits can take, well, they do take a 3.8 meter high field rib with a 25 horsepower, uh, together with a small inflatable with an, um, a little two and a half horsepower that stows up forward. Uh, Christine and Johan have good access to get into various ports or then to go exploring or, or take their son water skiing, that sort of thing. So toys, a big aspect about choosing a big cruising yacht with this much stowage space. Another prime feature of this design is really opening up that access between the saloon, conventional saloon, I guess, galley, and, and the aft cockpit area. And that has also allowed them to extend this galley, so it really is the heart of the boat. Massive amount of room there. And leaves, you know, more of a coffee table style setup inside, as it were, and then in this aft covered cockpit area, that's where you do your eating and relaxing in the open air. Um, it's a massive area, as you can see. Uh, nice job at making these, these seats reclined as well, comfortable, not too upright. Um, and these big chaise long areas, that one, prime one up there to lie down, completely protected away from the elements. And of course, this big one here as well. And also a smart, uh, canopy covering to enclose this cockpit uh, when it is you know raining or cold it's there it's easy to do you don't have to rig up rig them up they literally unzip and roll down uh, and have uh, buttons to to secure them on the decks here as well so it gives a bit of security in terms of stowage there's masses as you can imagine this is an enormous boat I would say equivalent to about a 70 75 foot monohull so deep stowage below this bench locker. You've got your grill area here. Another deep stowage locker in there with, um, actually does have, designed to have a life raft locker below it, um, which, could, which can drop out through, through the deck itself. So you could get it from either side, but all Fontaine Pajot owners tend to go for the life raft stowage below those steps there, which just left, lift easily. It means you can get the, uh, the life raft out easily as well. 
and then below sole you have uh, well, a dinghy locker. That's the inflatable dinghy in there with the two and a half horsepower engine for it stowed up on the foredeck. And a drinks fridge for the cockpit here. Rest of the refrigeration space in and around the galley. So on this boat, we have a, a drawer style freezer here. A freezer with drawers in it, I should say. Uh, and then those two big chest fridges further forward. And you see it's, uh, yeah, a massive amount of kitchen galley room in the heart of the boat. The island working really well to make it a social, interactive space. Uh, yes, of course, you can have an induction stove, um, get rid of all the gas. They might end up changing this for an in-between. Um, this one, yeah, twin sinks, plenty of work surface area, plenty of stowage. Uh, bin in there, more more drawers below each side and also in all these build panels you can see here is further galley stowage in general as well slightly unusual i think is to pretty much get rid of the nav station completely so yeah there's it's touchscreen um 12 volts twist of 24 volt system here to, to access hang on let me turn this screen off stop it flickering yeah, so unusual not to have a nav station or desk area, really. This one's set up just to have the touch screen for your, your normal switch panel to see your water systems, that sort of thing, um, which you can also have on the Garmin touch screen there as well. I won't focus on that because it's flickering. And there's also one for, for the 240 volt. Um, but the jo Johan tends to do his work from his main desk area, which is down there. I, yeah, I think I would probably miss personally having a forward facing area to do that. But there is a, this, this deck is one layout only really, apart from the choice of having that a lowering table there. Uh, yeah, so I think also that's a really nice central opening window there, plenty of ventilation for it for the uh, the mast base. But slightly low, so you don't quite have you sort of have to crouch a bit to get that horizon view. Otherwise obviously massive amount of natural light and views. They've increased the uh, skylights here than over normal ones. This has a blind over it to protect it from the UV. Um, but you get obviously good vision up onto your mainsail there as well. Uh, yeah, and then big area for your refrigeration. Say this this can drop to fill in there, make a big day bed, and you've got a TV back on that aft bulkhead. Not sure on places to sit down and relax. And then dropping down you six steps down into this porthole, you get to start to see the real, really appreciate the volume you get in a modern cruising catamaran hull. The structures allow them to open these bulkheads out completely uh, to give this huge amount of volume, which you feel the space you really feel as I say, having that open access aft, I think it's a wonderful feature. You, you can imagine that if you're living, this is your home for, for months, for years, um, you really appreciate all of this space especially private spaces this obviously a massive amount of stowage a bit of relaxing changing area proper size wardrobes um, i won't open them all up because this as I say, is an owner's boat is being used um, for work and to live aboard so uh, you can, but you do get to appreciate just how much space there is and so yeah, bank of three wardrobes there, cupboards here, plenty uh, of small little nooks and places to keep your bits and bobs each side of this thwart ship's berth now. Uh, uh, and again, cupboards aft, easy access out outside as well. Um, another thing to mention here is that most of the berths 
are athwart ships so we can get that view so going sideways on you get that view out of the big hull windows and this you can have you could have another cabin further forward here or have the whole hull to yourself you could have another two in a charter version you can have four cabins you can have five cabins you can have six cabins this one has one on this side and three on the other more stowage going forward and then this enormous great heads this isn't the heads this is a bathroom with a walk-in shower there with the screen separating it off and then a separate heads compartment further forward again lots of headroom and there are no lights on there are no lights on on this boat so that's all the natural light flooding in here another thing to note about this is that Jan and Christine have just come back two days ago from two months on board after taking the boat they spent two months sailing around Brittany and only used the generator only turned the generator on once and that was just to test it so I'll talk about the battery management system in a minute and the solar panel area that has allowed them to do that. So this has got a lot of kit on at the moment, getting ready for the boat show that starts here in La Rochelle soon. So this is the central cabin, that bulkhead dividing it between this and the aft cabin with its own access. So again, it's a big double, it's a big cabin. They all have their own ensuite shower and heads area. There's plenty of storage space in all the cabins. Below here is the air conditioning plumbing, I believe. Yeah. So you have the sea chests there for the air conditioning pumps and the manifolds. So this is a Vinalester hull, vacuum infused and it injected decks. 18 tons lightweight, be nice. He sealed the plywood, a little bugbear of mine. Um, yeah, 18 tons light ship. Uh, finished quality looks like, to me, a good improvement um, over the past, but I still have an issue with square corners, square edges everywhere. I know designers like it and it might be easier to build, but, well, there we go, there's proof in point where the veneer has been knocked on the corner there. You also, you do fall around on catamarans, so I don't know, never a fan of square edges everywhere. Round them off, let me see some rounded fiddles. Anyway, another big, I guess this would be a VIP cabin. It's good, good space each side, step up onto this big double berth. Again, looking out over that, plenty more stowage space in the wardrobes and drawers beneath the berth. And again, another ensuite heads and shower area there. Further forward of that, it's gonna be the sail locker access from deck. So all down the sides of the coach roof, you have integrated solar panels. And that, yes, it's an option, but here go running right around this coach roof, that gives 2000 watts of solar panel space and that will feed into the battery bank as standard you have 600 amp hours of battery this one for this boat they upgraded to lithium iron which makes sense when you want to run lots of solar power uh, so they upgraded and doubled that with lithium iron so here some waves coming if people feel that noise the ferry's just gone past this has three, sorry, six 200 amp hour lithium ion batteries there. So as they, when they were cruising, they were able to uh, not run the generator at all, two months and yeah, uh, run silent ship and solar, even when it was cloudy was enough to, to do that. This side of the battery bank there is the water maker, aqua based water maker, and then you have the 75 horsepower Volvo 
block there on each side. Uh, and that's just where the electric drives would go if you had the smart electric version as well. So Fontaine Pajot bought an electric pod manufacturer essentially here. So they can still install their own and there's access to the steering gear aft. And starboard side access into the last cabin here, which always stays like this. Again, good amount of space. I'll be very happy here on charter or as a guest, especially with sea access there. And yeah, heads and again, separate shower area. on this side and on the starboard side access into the the four peaks so in this you got all your lines and fenders below this one and um, all your water sports toys below the other so we have a little bit of wind coming and Johan and Christine just showing us how they sail the boat a bit more because we haven't really had the chance yet After obviously you have a helming area and then the winch is set up with a space in between and Leo's got his little bench back there as well. quite convenient that you can control winches, halyards, sheets, reefs and helm at the same time. That's uh, pretty useful. So you presumably you tend to put it on autopilot and then um, you just stand here to trim. Yeah, n normally when we hoist to sail or when we do a maneuver, either if it's really, really light and you have time, I may have turned this off. You can just oop, helm behind your back. Yeah. But uh, it's also easy to just put the autopilot and, you, and use the autopilot. If you want to forget the the helming and just focus on the on the winches and, and the sheets. So now we are accelerating. We got 3.5 knots of wind. <laughs> so <laughs> hold on. And so you can do everything from these three winches except the spinnaker sheets. Yes. Okay. Yes. All the halyards are here, all the reef lines, the sheets for the jib. And it's two things you cannot do from here. One is the furler for the for the jib. You can bring it up to this winch mm -hmm. and furl it electrically. But the sheets for, for a spinnaker or a bigger head sail you need to do from and, and what about visibility, especially when you're docking, it's it's okay, or you or presumably always try and dock the starboard okay. side too, <laughs> yeah. Now you you get used to it, but for sure it's easier when you do it on, on, yeah. on starboard side. So if you can, that's a preference, but... Uh, or you just avoid marinas. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we do mainly. But you can actually, if, if you sort of bend down, you can see the other side a bit from here. Yeah but you don't have the same overview as you would have on this side. And it's unusual for performance sailors to, to not keep going up in a performance thing and they're recognizing that you only spend less than 10% of your time sailing, the rest at anchor or in port. So having the space to have your toys is fundamentally important. Johan, an ex-professional windsurfer, they've got room for their windsurf boards they got room for, you know, big dinghy for water skiing and stuff. So it's, you can enjoy your more performance side of sailing, your adrenaline sports once you're, once you're on the hook, because you've got space to take, you've got space to take the toys with you. Hope you enjoy the tour. See you next time.